This episode of the After Action Review Podcast is brought to you by the Java Can, an all-in-one ruggedized coffee brewing system designed by a green beret so that you can make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere from your backyard to a mountaintop in Afghanistan. The Java Can will brew you and your team a fresh cup of coffee no matter where life takes you. Go to thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, and get 10% off your purchase. That's thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, get your 10% off. Live life charged. Interaction Review with Rod Rodriguez. How's everyone doing? So uh, we are Facebook Live. We don't have any viewers yet, which is fine because we're in the middle of the day. And if you are on Facebook in the middle of the day, you're probably supposed to be working, uh, which is fine because hopefully you're watching this later. Um, I'm Rod Rodriguez with the After Action Review Podcast. This is my company, uh, Clear Camo. This is the podcast side, the podcast production side of the house. And this is my guest, uh, Stephen Dan- uh, Danahook. Um, and he is with um, Warfighter Hemp. And we're about to kick this podcast off in a minute. And, um, oh, wait. D- Danahook. I'm sorry, Danahook. That's fine. That's how, that's how, I, that's how I start my I've show. I've called worse. That's how I like to start my show. I like to mispronounce my guest's name. <laughs> uh, maybe fuck it up a little bit. I, I don't know. Uh, so we got a viewer. Uh, Eric Rodriguez. Eric Rodriguez is a BJJ, uh, just a, a BJJ guru, like Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which is actually really fitting because like the jiu-jitsu community is super into uh, cannabis, marijuana, well, uh, and all this other stuff. So uh, MMA was a big, big uh, adopter of CBD initially, and CBD was approved by the World Doping Agency about six months ago, maybe a little more than that. So. For athletes, it's definitely, you know, something that that um, something that should be considered for the healing process. For sure. So, Even though we're on Facebook Live and uh, all that good stuff, we're going to be pushing this uh, podcast out on uh, the AAR podcast. So if you haven't already, make sure you go check out uh, www.theaarpodcast.com, theaarpodcast.com. Go to the website. Lots of links to uh, uh, join up. And we never send you crap emails. It's always just straight up 100% uh, veteran-owned businesses. We talk about what's gone right, what's gone wrong, and everything in between. Um, so let's jump right into it. I want to thank my my guest here, Stephen, for doing this a second time. So the reason behind all of this uh, super recording, which is like you know three levels of recording, is because we already did this once. Um, we sat down. We had a great conversation. And at the end of the show, I checked out my my recorder and the SD card shit itself. It just died. So none of that was recorded. I did not do a backup like I should have. Um, broke my own rule. One is one is none. Two is one. So here we are. And we are re-recording. Uh, Steven, thanks again for being on the show and for being so damn patient. I really appreciate you. Oh, first time was a dress rehearsal. Dress rehearsal, absolutely. Steven, uh, tell me about who you are and tell me about Warfighter Hemp. Um, sure. Um, retired out of the Marine Corps Reserve, 2014. Um, while I was on active duty, I, I worked, spent a good deal of time working wounded issues and got exposed to the injuries and issues and over-medication issues that were um, starting to ramp up with the uh, wounded and then soon to be veterans. Mm -hmm. And left active duty, um, started a nonprofit, did pretty well with the nonprofit, kind of met that need, um, wanted to address the over-medication need a little bit. So uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Boone Cutler, who um, he had a radio program, uh, he's gonna have one up again here shortly, we hope. Uh, he, he started a thing called the Spartan Pledge, which is essentially a, an oath that a veteran takes with another veteran that they won't take their own lives without reaching out and, and 
you know, doing a check-in, you know, before one does something so drastic. And um, Boone and I, um, you know, we had numerous conversations and we both kind of agreed that the over-medication that was taking place in the community had a large part to do with this. And the more we started talking, it was interesting because we never, I never knew that he was a pro-cannabis guy. Mm -hmm. He kind kind of uh, kept his cards close to the chest on that. And I'm a a retired officer, an airline pilot. I'm definitely not a pro-cannabis guy. You're you're not the first person I would think of as being pro-cannabis. So so what do I do? I start a business that sells cannabis. <laughs> That's exactly what you do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but that was after getting educated. So anyway, uh, long story short, uh, through numerous conversations with Boone and the back and forth on it, you know, we're like, you know, one way that guys, I had seen guys getting off of the, the psychotropic meds and the opioids through cannabis, uh, be it marijuana or CBD oil. Um, the CBD side kind of drew me in more than the marijuana side does, but that's you know that's Why my is background. That? Um, well, we discussed this before in mm-hmm. our last chat, but uh, I joined the military initially in 1981, uh, right around the time when they instituted the drug testing policy. It was like 82, mid you know the summer of 82. I think. So prior to that, they weren't testing. They weren't testing, and and uh, the uh, amount of uh, drug use, you know, particularly uh, particularly marijuana, was you know just through the roof. I mean, you you literally could get. I was in the 82nd Airborne. You literally could get stoned from walking down the hallway from one end of the barracks to the other, without you know you know doing anything yourself other than mm-hmm. breathing. That contact high. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, and that's how it was, you know, and. Then there was a, just pr- prior to the in- institution of the drug policy, there was a major mishap on the USS in- Enterprise, and uh, a bunch of sailors got killed, and they, through the investigation, they determined that marijuana use was, was a leading causal factor that led to the mishap. So that's when, you know, Reagan said, you know, we're going to do something about this, we're going to professionalized the all volunteer force and they started doing the drug testing so did that go hand in hand the, with the don't the, with the uh, just say no stuff it did that, that it Nancy was Reagan's all, out all there? around the same time um probably in the military a little sooner than nancy reagan's now i know stuff. there's conspiracy guys right now saying you see that whole that whole accident that happened on that aircraft carrier Nah, man, that was an inside <laughs> job. They're just trying to find a way to legal, you know, to make weed illegal. Blah blah blah. I don't know. I, yeah. This is the first time I've heard really that you know the genesis behind our drug policy. Yeah. So the army or the DOD says no more marijuana. Well, um, they they never said yes marijuana. They never they, said no. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. They, they didn't have a urinalysis program. So now they said no marijuana. Period. Yeah. What is the difference then between marijuana and CBD? Because I know that the same plant, different things. Right. Like there's different products. There's marijuana. So they're they're both forms of cannabis. So mm-hmm. cannabis sativa is the plant that CBD is derived from. So it can either come from marijuana, which is a plant under cannabis, mm-hmm. or hemp, or in our case, industrial hemp, which is another plant. Uh, marijuana is is uh, grown and bred and and uh, cloned and uh, to produce uh, a plant with a high amount of THC. THC is the the mind altering psychoactive component of of the plant. Uh, it's one of you know give or take 250 different cannabinoids that are known to exist in cannabis. Hemp, on the other hand, uh, is not high in THC content, it's very low. And industrial hemp, which is a, a, um, it's a class that is federally defined, Mm -hmm. has to be under 0.3% THC in the plant. If it's under that and it's licensed and it's grown in conjunction with a, um, with a university research program, which our farm is, then it's a federally legal plant. 
so we can we can grow it. We can produce pro- byproducts, ship them across state lines, and it's legal. So that's a big difference. So everybody knows about marijuana in 29 states, or I don't, I don't know what it is now after the election, 31 or 32, where marijuana is legal, either recreationally or for med- medicinal purposes. <clears throat> industrial hemp, or CBD derived from industrial hemp, is legal in all 50 states. Unless the state says, no, it's mm-hmm. not legal. And there's a couple states that are going back and forth on that right now. So you're telling me the THC is basically the fun part of marijuana. That's right. the, the fun side. And that's the part that people use for y- recreational. Well, I, and yes, y- yes and no. And there, there are medicinal purposes behind THC, too. And, and uh, when you talk about uh, things like uh, uh, anti-cancer mm-hmm. um, okay. treatments, THC, a lot of people believe THC is a big component in that uh, along with high volume of CBD so there are there are definitely medicinal sides to THC as well but it does have that psychoactive effect um, you know I, th- I think anybody who's serious about the 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 plant and mm-hmm. the benefits of the plant would probably not recommend it to their kids you know their high right. school kids I mean the THC side um, because there's so much that still isn't known about how it affects the brain or growing brain. That makes sense. Et cetera. But uh, the CBD side found in industrial hemp, you know, there's no known negative side effects. To now, it. now on the CBD side, and, you know, if you can't answer some, if you can't answer like a medical question, obviously, that, the, or, you know, I'm, I guess my question here is, what is CBD oil? Why is it special? What is the secret behind why it works? And what does it work for? So... Again, you know, there are medicinal benefits to THC, but CBD is like the mother load of the medicinal benefits in cannabis. Um, you know, it, it, our, our Facebook group, uh, Warfighter Hemp Info Group on Facebook, you can go on there and, you know, your listeners can go on there and ask the people that are in the group what they use it for, and they'll find, you know, just dozens of different reasons why people are using it from chronic pain, anxiety. Um, we've had so many veterans get off opioids uh, using CBD. Um, you name it. Uh, you know, I've got a bad shoulder. Uh, you were telling me mm-hmm. the other day mm-hmm. that you used the sample. Why don't you? So us. I tried it. Yeah. And, you know, of course, I did exactly what you said. Um, I did my homework, made sure that, you know, I'm not going to pop hot. But, you know, it, it. this is one of those things that you know, for anybody that's listening or watching right now, you know, you have to do your due diligence. You can't point at a website and say, well, they said it was okay. You know, obviously you're going to do your research, make sure that this, you, you know what you're putting in, in your body, which is funny because like of all the things we put in our body, I think the CBD oil is probably the least worrisome. Uh, I just, mm-hmm. you have a Starbucks. I had a Starbucks earlier and I'm like, I have no idea what the hell's in my Starbucks. Like it doesn't taste like the coffee I brew at home. There could be plastics. I mean, the, the cup we're putting it in. Who knows? Mm. Um, almost 20 years in the Army. Everything hurts. Uh, I've got 20 years in the Army, uh, six years of jiu-jitsu. Uh, I've had Eric Rodriguez uh, put me in a couple of, of terrible positions where I'm like, my body shouldn't be folding like this, and I'm 38 years old. So, obviously, I have... I have pain. In fact, I will tell you, true story. Uh, it's it's funny because like I was just thinking about the pain. This weekend, I was editing uh, a podcast uh, for one of the Clear Combo clients. Uh, this is going to be my my opportunity now to give a quick shout out. Uh, American <laughs> Hysteria, boom, we're number eleven in the country. So go check it out, American Hysteria on Apple Podcasts. But that's the end of my pitch. Uh, so, anyways, spent the whole weekend sitting in front of a, uh, my computer screen and I'm hunched over like you see me now, like I'm just hunched over and click, 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 click. My wife asked me to measure a piece of wall in the hallway. So I mm-hmm. got up and I, I leaned over just a little bit to measure, bro, something happened mm-hmm. in my back. I was just like, oh my God, like it, it felt like somebody just slammed me in the back with like a baseball bat. I'm like, trying to sit up and she's looking at me like what's wrong i'm like i don't know like i think sitting and then like getting up to move something tweaked so that night i i, bro, I could barely lay down mm-hmm. 
So I remembered your CBD oil. I'm like, you know what? This is an opportunity to try this out. So I did the one milligram under the tongue and I'm letting it. Milliliter. One milliliter. Yeah, what did I say? Milligram. Milligram. Oh, that's much bigger, isn't it? Yeah, you, so we gave you a bottle of yes. 900, so one milliliter would be 30 milligrams of CBD. Okay. See, I don't know my metric system. But uh, so, yeah, I, I, I took the prescribed dose mm-hmm. like we, we, we talked about, put it under the tongue, and I'm sitting there, and my wife is watching me. She's like, so what's it feel like? You, you, you feel anything weird? I'm like, I'm not feeling anything. Um, but then I had this sensation in my back where it felt like butter. Like, like it just felt... You could lit- I could literally feel something happening mm-hmm. and I could sit down. Like I, I lay down in bed and I twisted and I turned and she's like, did, did that work? I'm like, oh my God, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I could lay down, I got a good night's sleep. I woke up with pain. Mm-hmm. But I think it's because the CBD oil obviously just wore off. It was six hours, almost eight hours of, of sleeping. Mm-hmm. And I woke up, I was in a little bit of pain, but I wasn't in like the pain that I was before, mm-hmm. so I might that attribute that to again. I'm I'm a huge skeptical person, so I'm not saying that it wasn't the CBD oil, but I think that it was a mix of getting good night's sleep, which I think the CBD oil helped definitely, get me there. Definitely helped me get me there. So um, I'm not pain free right now. Like right, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to go do jujitsu today, and I try, might not be able to go. Try using it topically. Just take take a cream, you know, or if your wife has a lotion or something. Mm-hmm. And mix, you know, half a eyedropper, or not even that much, a third, you know, into your the palm of your hand, mm. and then apply that to your back. I mean, we have a lotion that you can use for that purpose too, but you know, you don't have it right now, mm-hmm. so try that. That's and a really good idea. Yeah, I didn't know. I, no, it I, works phenomenally. Didn't think about topical. Yeah. Huh. It, the, if you take it topically, it hits different receptors. You have. Uh, in the, you know, I'm not a scientist, but you know, from what I've read, there are y- y- your body has its own endocannabinoid. I can't even say the word. We get Endo, you. Endocannabinoid system, mm-hmm. and that's what the CBD, you know, connects with, and it unlocks different natural healing capacities in your body. So CBD one receptors are in your brain. So that's where the, the oral uh, that goes into your bloodstream will intermingle. CBD, <coughs> CB2 receptors are in your skin, primarily. So would it motion. Be, would it be bad to do both? Not at all. Okay, so. Uh, that, in fact, you know, for certain maladies, that's the best way to do it. And uh, we're coming out with a, like a bath salts and CBD bath bombs. You know that you can drop in the tub. You know, so boom, you get 30 milligrams of CBD while you're taking a bath, and you know it's a great way to get it in your system. That's an interesting way. I didn't. I never thought about like a bath bomb or like an immersion process. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. So one of the things we were talking about before we kicked the show off, uh, you showed me a, a a Facebook post and an email, and I want to touch on something that I thought was interesting because I never would have thought about you know using cannabis oil or, or CBD for for dogs, right? It works on dogs. What is that? So it's a brand new product that we came out with, uh, literally like this past week, and we partnered with a, another veteran charity here in the Virginia. Or he's originally from Virginia. Uh, the nonprofit's called Semper Canine. Semper Canine. Canine, right? Uh, it was a Marine uh, MP dog handler. Uh, when he was on active duty, and him and his wife started a nonprofit to train uh, rescue dogs to become service animals. So we partnered with them. We, half of our money uh, that we make in profits goes to veteran charities. So just wrote a check to them as one of our supported charities. Uh, so you buy Warfighter Hemp, you're helping. You're not just you know putting money in my pocket. You're helping the Warfighter community, the veteran community, mm-hmm. and. Most of our grants that we write, we, we, we find out about the organizations through our customers. You know, it's like, hey, I interacted with this small mom and pop, you know, type nonprofit usually. Had a great experience with them. They're really dedicated people. Great. You know, we'll put them in. We'll contact them and see if they're interested in a grant. What conditions 
can a dog suffer from same, that same CBD? As, so same? Same as humans. Anxiety. I would think in particular rescue dogs because a lot mm -hmm. of them were probably abused or a good number of them. Um, pain, chronic pain, you know, cancer. I, I just read a, an article. It's funny that now, now that you're talking about this, it kind of triggered in, in the back of my head an article that I read about um, canines that are coming back from Afghanistan and, and Iraq that have PTSD. Like we don't think sure. about the dogs Absolutely. that have PTSD. They get blown up, yeah. they get shot at, they they are exposed to a lot of stuff and maybe it's even worse for them because they don't know what the hell's going on. Like mm -hmm. to us, we get, oh, this guy, th that was a bomb. For a dog, like what is their interpretation of war? Like mm -hmm. you, you, we were we were in Camp Pendleton, we were playing, I got to chase that guy with the big arm thingy and I got to chew on him and that was fun. And next thing you know, I have no leg. Like what yeah. the fuck just happened? Yeah. I never thought like, CBD oil or your handler yeah. got blown up. That's yeah. right. They lose their the their friend, the person mm -hmm. that's raised them. That guy's gone. Mm -hmm. Wow. So canines for cannabis. Canines for cannabis. Or cannabis for canines. Maybe that's better. Cannabis for canines. Is that a thing? Are we making a thing? Are we... It might be a thing. Hashtag yeah. can uh, canines for cannabis. Yeah. It's like a like a political campaign. <laughs> I like that. Canines for cannabis. Um, speaking of politics. There is a lot of politics behind the legalization of marijuana. There's legal. There's um, politics behind med medicinal marijuana, which I guess ties directly into the legalization of CBD oils and and all the the challenges that come with that. And we talked very briefly during our dress rehearsal, if you will, about uh, a House resolution. Kind of take us through what what is going on at the political end of CBD oil. Yeah, so most of the legislation that Congress has been trying to put through has been dealing with, with marijuana uh, and medicinal marijuana. It started out with marijuana and then became medicinal marijuana. Um, the House Veterans Affairs Committee has written numerous letters to the VA, Secretary of the VA, saying, hey, we need you to research this. Is this an alternative you know, for veterans to use instead of opioids? whatever um the va's response pretty much to date has been well marijuana is not federally illegal we can't do it our hands are tied so it's not really gone anywhere um about four or five months ago uh, i got invited to go to a, a round table that uh, um, congressman walsh who's a ranking member on uh, veterans affairs committee put on to discuss H.R. 5520, which is a piece of legislation going back to the VA, asking them to research, and here's the big caveat, not medicinal marijuana or marijuana, but medicinal cannabis. So when I, when I saw that, and you can Google H.R. 5520 and read it yourself, it's not long, it's only a couple pages. Uh, when I saw that, it was like, bingo, you know, they just opened the door to CBD, and now the VA has no excuse not to research CBD derived mm -hmm. from industrial hemp because it's federally legal per the 2014 Farm Bill. Um, 2018 Farm Bill is still pending. Um, it's probably going to open up more legality for industrial hemp, not so much for marijuana. In fact, not, nothing, really, for marijuana. But so we have... We have a federally legal product mm -hmm. that the VA answer that we can't study it because it's illegal doesn't doesn't hold water to because it is federally legal and we can source it and we have an American grown organic product. So is this the fight that people should get behind? Because it sounds to me and, and, and as, as a lay person, I don't I mean, for crying out it's loud, a, I just asked you the difference between marijuana and, and cannabis. So, yeah, that's probably a, I'm I mean, not the smartest a, person. It's a fight that I'd like people to get behind. But. Because Most, doesn't that open the door for marijuana? I mean, it, it eventually will. It seems like we're going around. We're we're going at this backwards because you talk about we talk exactly. about med medical marijuana. We talk about marijuana legalization. People are thinking you just want to get doped up at home. You just want to get high right. and and watch cartoons. But if we talk about CBD well, oil, I, isn't that something that's well, completely different? One of the things that the roundtable that really, you know, stuck in my memory was you know, and they had all the big you know they had the four chartered VSOs, you know, DAV and VFW and all that. And, and then there were a number of uh, smaller organizations, Normal and 
whatnot. We're all all there. You know, the, the heads. You know, for many of the organizations, were there. So I'm I'm not gonna say which one I was sitting next to, but you know, he tell st- me later. St- stuck his yeah off air. Um, he stuck his hand up and said to to Congressman Wallace, he's like, you know, sir, if if we had just had a substance that had all the medicinal mm-hmm. benefits in cannabis, mm-hmm. but it didn't have the THC, you know, that's something so many veterans would get behind. And I'm like, I just wanted to slap the guy. I was like, you know. It's right here. Th- yeah, it's right here. You know, that's, you know, what I'm here trying to talk about. See, you had an opportunity, though. You could have been like, hey, I did. $20 million of research. Give that to me. I'll research it. And then next week be like, here it is. Look what I did. I, I Believe me. I, I, <laughs> believe me. I, I I didn't stick my hand up. I, you know, I stood at attention, started barking at the top of my lungs. But knife hand. It's still, it's still. Um, there's still a real. Everybody just thinks marijuana. That's everybody's got tunnel vision on marijuana, and I'm not. I'm now not an uh, anti-marijuana guy, but I see CBD derived from industrial hemp as sort of. The Marines taking the beach, you know, and, you know, creating that, that, that beachhead, you know, that then the follow on troops and the logistics and all that can come, come in behind. That makes sense. And that's always been an issue, I think, with anybody that, that talks about the legalization of any of the drugs that are, you know, on that particular schedule of, of prohibited, you know, substances is there seems to be a problem with the gameplay, the playbook. Nobody's, I think there's very few people like yourself who are looking at it from a, from a strategic point of view. Like, look, mm-hmm. we, we can't just go in there and, you know, pound on doors and be like, marijuana forever. There's There's gotta be a, a process to mm-hmm. this. And it seems like the route you're going through with CBD makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's It's steps especially with this culture right now where we've had this war on drugs, which arguably was dumb uh, to a certain extent. I think that we, the, it, it's a, it's a tough argument to make. Um, but I think we definitely waged war on drugs in a very inefficient way. Um, certain, a lot of mistakes have been made, mm. but it's the culture, this anti-drug culture that you're really fighting. So people hear marijuana, they lump that into the same group as heroin. Mm-hmm. They're thinking like, oh, it's, a, it's the same schedule drug yep. as heroin. And their cocaine is is le- uh, is regulated less uh, strictly than marijuana is. Or cannabis. That's crazy. That's insane. Like we're thinking of marijuana and <clears throat> heroin in the same sentence, but oh, cocaine is fine. Less <laughs> less restrictions on coke. Like, uh, isn't that what the whole drug war was about? Now, again conspiracy guys right now are probably like you know i've got i I know i know the real deal man um it's crazy to me that cbd oil has all these medicinal factors and we're not doing enough to make it legal Mm -hmm. to to really make it as available as aspirin Mm -hmm. which probably has more side effects than anything that you're offering on your website so we come to the part where you know, we're looking at CBD oil. Maybe it could it, it could get legalized. What kind of challenges are you facing now in an era where it's not everything is not as public and as understood? Mm-hmm. You know, in the future, I'm sure that we'll have legalized marijuana. We'll have all this, and it's going to be a huge industry. But for right now, what are some of the challenges you're facing as a small business owner? Uh, so our Probably our biggest challenge is advertising. Uh, we can't we can't advertise on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Google, whatnot. Even though we're legal, uh, they they because it's associated with cannabis. We're we're not a. Uh, but you're legal. So if you're if you're legal, what does it have to do with people not letting it's you advertise? The those businesses won't let us advertise. Mm. I've heard. Uh, over the past year, I've heard two radio ads for CBD, one in New York and one in L.A. Those are the only two advertisements that I've seen. Um, that said, um, we are legal to advertise. So in uh, January, in the VFW magazine, 
we're going to have an ad. So that's, you know, that goes out to over a million veterans. So hoping, hoping good things come from that. Do you think the veteran community is more understanding and adoptive of this than the civilian community? I, I, I definitely do. Um, especially this, this, uh, OIF OEF generation, um, they just get it, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they get the, the stuff that the VA is trying to shove down their throats doesn't work. Yeah. We see all these, well, you know, it's, it, you've been at the VA, I assume you, you've seen what they do in terms of what they consider treatment. Here's a bag of pills. Here's all these little brown well, I don't, bottles. I don't want to bash the VA either. I mean, they do a lot of great stuff. They do a lot of great stuff, but I think that in, in respect to the medical treatment, right. or I should say the pharmacological treatments, mm -hmm. there is this reliance and dependence. But at the same time, I can't get too mad at them because it's not like the VA doctor can be like, you know what? I hate these rules. Here's some weed. You mm -hmm. can't do that. I mean, you can only do what you can mm -hmm. within the left and right limits that you're given. And the VA, like every other organization, is a federal organization. And we all know how, how fast federal moves to, to change regulations. Well, they're, currently they're supposed to be able to converse with their, their patients about cannabis. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't recommend it, they can't prescribe it, but they can have a conversation about it. They can but, stomp the floor with their foot like, <laughs> uh. But that doesn't uh, mean that those policies translate down to every VA or VA right. clinic in the system. So, you know, it is, it's a huge, massive organization, you know, and you're going to have good elements and bad elements. In of course. It. So Absolutely. Like military. So where can we go to learn more about Warfighter Hemp? Uh, our Facebook page is phenomenal just because it's all user driven. Uh, any ailment that you might have, you can go on there and, you know, say, hey, I, I've got fibromyalgia. Uh, I'm 37 years old and I weigh this much. What do you recommend? And you'll get, you know, a dozen posts within an hour from different customers saying what their experience has been. This is not a place for you folks to go get medical advice. It is a place to ask questions. I just, I, I know some people are like that right. and they're just be like, oh, no, well, let's uh, go over there. And like, that's, it's one, just advice. One of the requirements for us to be legal is, so we're classified as a supplement, uh, FDA supplement. We're not a drug. Mm -hmm. um, so because we're a supplement, we can't say, you know, we can't give medical advice or. But it's uh, a great place to go get information. Absolutely. Ask some questions. You know, this is how it helped me. Right. It may help you, you know, in the same way. And, and I'm telling you, folks, it helped my back this weekend. I, and, and I am a huge skeptic. I am the biggest skeptical hippo on the planet. I will, mm -hmm. I will rise out of the water and give you skeptical hippo eyes all day long when you tell me, oh, this is going to help you. It was amazing. It was absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, so the Facebook group, and that's... Yeah, the, the other, um, I mean, you can go on to government websites, mm -hmm. the National Health Institute, N NHI. It's got, and just type in CBD in there, and you'll find most of the research that's been done has been done overseas, but they'll publish, you know, re research papers, you know, mm -hmm. from, you know, from Israel. I Israel's been the, probably the leading, uh, in, you know, in research on cannabis. But uh, Spain, good job, Israel. <laughs> Spain, um, you know, other other um, places in Europe have done quite a bit too. So, if I want to go purchase CBD oil, the same CBD oil that helped Rod's back this weekend, where do I go to get it? Warfighterhemp.com. Um, again, warfighterhemp, all one word. dot com. Uh, if anybody's got a question, they can email me info at warfighterhemp.us. Uh, and the Facebook group are great sources. Um, the other thing I want to stress, too, is our, our products, USDA certified organic. It's grown here in the United States, which if you go into, you know, the, the vape shop down the street, um, odds are the CBD that's being sold in there, one, may or may not contain what it says or claims to contain. Mm -hmm. And if it was derived from hemp, it was probably grown in China. Ooh. Nobody wants Chinese hemp? Um, 
it's not going to be organic and, okay. and God knows what else is in it and, and, um, what metals and other, uh, stuff might be in there. That's um, true. Our, our, every batch of our stuff's tested. Um, you know, I, I and you could, again, you could ask on our Facebook group, you know, and in fact, I'm going to do this tonight. I'm going to say, how many of you have used a different brand of CBD before you found Warfighter Hemp, and was it uh, effective? And the, I, I can tell you, you know, because I know, because people tell me, you know, mm -hmm. hey, I've I've tried four different brands of CBD, and none of them seem to work. On your, you guys, stuff works. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So. Is there, and I'm gonna ask, is there a veteran discount? Absolutely. Oh, what? Yeah. Veteran discount? Yeah. Get out of here. 20, 25% simple uh, verification process. 25%? Yep. Holy crap, that's a lot better yeah. than the 10% or 5% that you get anywhere. It's 25% and there's a verification process to make sure that you're uh, a veteran, you're legit. I'm sure you are. If you're listening to the show, you know you're a legit vet, but 25% off. And half the profits go to veteran charities. So how are you making money? <laughs> You're already giving us like 25% yeah, off not, and half of your money goes to veterans. really charities. not making a lot of money, you know, personally off it. You know, working, working really hard and spending a lot of time doing it, but not putting a lot of money in, in my pocket. You know, you're hitting on a theme that I've said over and over again. I've been doing this show for almost two years. And one of the principles behind a small business is don't do it for the money, mm -hmm. do it for the change. Do it for something bigger yeah. than you. And that's important. I mean, the passion. You a know, passion. If, if you're if you're passionate, and believe me, I'm really passionate about this because I've seen the difference it's made in so many lives. Then you're gonna success is gonna follow the passion. I mean, you could practically give this stuff away for free, and if you're passionate about it, you will make money at some point. Like mm -hmm. there will be a critical threshold that you're gonna reach because people will see that and go, you know what, this warfighter hemp guy, legit dude. Mm -hmm. You know, to hell with that Chinese, you know, knockoff, weird, you know, titanium, weird, toxic shit. I want good product, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get 25% off my purchase. It makes sense. You have three, three ingredients, or t either two or three. We, we have two lines. One, one line is uh, peppermint, and the other is natural flavor. Um, organic hemp oil. Now, uh, this is another nuance that people don't understand. Hemp oil is not CBD oil. CBD is derived from the flowers of the hemp plant, mm. um, not from the stalks or the seeds or uh, the other parts. The oil can be de derived from the other parts. So um, organic hemp oil is the base, and then we infuse it with the CBD uh, dosage or, or the milligram content per whatever strength you're getting. So you got that, and then for the peppermint flavor, because some people don't like the taste of cannabis, uh, it's organic can uh, peppermint oil. I think that's what I have because it tasted very peppermint to me. Mm -hmm. um, Steve, thanks so much for doing take two with me. I understand that you have a very busy schedule, flying planes uh, and running the small business on the side, probably what, whatever other uh, hobbies you have. This is really important work that you're doing with your small business. Mm -hmm. um, you, you may be a small business, but you're having a large impact on, on people. And some of the video, the pictures that you've shown me from people who have experienced a recovery from mm -hmm. numerous illnesses. You've got dog pictures of dogs that have, you know, rehabilitated due to CBD. You got you, those are same. those are my favorite. You know, those are we just launched the dog line last week. That's incredible. We're getting uh, people sending in feedback already, and it's just really really neat to see. So I'm going to check the the thing over here. Um, all right, we had a couple of people come in. Um, no quite Next time, guys, feel free to ask questions. I should have said that at the very beginning. Yeah. Was like, you know, hey, if you have a question, sure. just post it. But um, no questions so far, and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, folks. If you are truly a a supporter of veterans, put your money where your mouth is. That's that's just what it boils down to. Put your money where your mouth is, folks. Everybody can claim to be, I support vets, I support small business. Well, here's the thing. If you're not buying from a, from a veteran-owned business, I get it. It can be challenging to find the right product from a veteran-owned business that, that fits your needs. If there isn't one, if for some reason you can't find a veteran-owned business that sells the product that you're looking for, here's what you're going to do. Check it out, folks.
go to their social media. Find their social media pages, click like, follow, subscribe, and here's what it does. A lot of these businesses, they're gonna go for loans, they're gonna look for sponsors, they're gonna find, they need your support, whether it's financial or whether it's through social media. They see, people see those numbers. Those numbers mean something to whoever's gonna write that check. So when you contribute to that, you're helping that veteran business get a little more popularity, get a little more visibility, and potentially become the next biggest thing. All right, not all of us can be Black Rifle Coffee, not all of us can be, um, actually that's the only one that, or, or Grunt Styles, yet, yet, they all I started like somewhere. I talked to both of them. You know, I talked to Dan Ellerick, he's been on the show. C- CBD Coffee? What, a, CBD Coffee, a it's Black a, Rifle. It's a big thing. Black Rifle, what's up? CBD Coffee, contact and, my man here, and, Steve. And uh, Hemp Clothing, the China's military has gone to hemp uniforms. Hmm. So we don't have the textile um, manufacturing capability in the U.S. yet, but our, our farm's got contracts with Patagonia right now. Dan Alaric, where you at? Like hemp t-shirts, hemp shirts, mm-hmm. hemp, hemp clothing. So uh, warfighterhemp.com, that's the place to go. Folks, like, listen, subscribe to the After Action Review Podcast. This is a show all about veteran entrepreneurs, all about veteran entrepreneurship. Um, And, uh, you know, I I just want to make this clear. It is not just about veterans. This show is for my first responders. This show is for my families of veterans. And both of them get the same 25% discount. They get that. You guys get that 25% discount. Guys, this show is all about supporting those who make huge sacrifices for this country. And I can tell you that, especially uh, spouses, you guys out there, who are supporting that vet, who are supporting that first responder. If you have a small business, shoot me an email. I would love to have you on the show. Uh, Pretty soon I've got a a couple of uh, naval spouses in Norfolk who do some coding, who do a whole bunch of other stuff. It's fantastic. So that's what the show is about. Like, listen, subscribe, and share this episode. And every other episode, remember, when you like and subscribe to this show, you're supporting every veteran-owned business that comes on this show. Every single one. Gotta love that. Look, I just finished saying that you need to support veteran businesses. Support them all. Just click subscribe. Bam. It's kind of self-serving. I know. But it's my show. So I'm going to be self-serving for a minute. All right, folks. That does it for me. I will see you all at the next episode. Steve, thanks, man. Thanks.